محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اليوم إن شاء الله نفتح الباب من البداية للأسئلة فإذا كان هناك أي سؤال فأنا أنتظر منكم الأسئلة Jade, so after praising Allah and sending the salat wa salam upon his messenger, then the Sheikh said that he would like to open the door from the beginning of the our, our meeting today to open the door for questions. So anybody that has any question, uh, whether it's uh, related to what we've covered uh, previously or something else that you believe is relevant, uh, then you can click the raise hand button, inshallah. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum as uh, For some reason, I'm not able to find the raise hand button. So is that okay if I can ask my question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so my question, I had uh, a couple of questions. Firstly was uh, related to a lesson that we did a few weeks back, which was uh, linked to mercy and having mercy for people and Allah's mercy. And then it was also linked to the question that Brother Ali Hassan asked about making dua for a non-Muslim. So if, if in case we do ha have uh, non-Muslim relatives, uh, can we make dua for them uh, when they are alive that may Allah guide him along with that, grant them good health if they are falling sick or, or if they're in, in difficult situations, can we make dua for them? Yes, I believe I was uh, answering this question. Yes, you can. Uh, you can make dua for them health as example mm -hmm. and in the same time you can make dua for them tawfiq lil hidayah right right am i clear yes yes alhamdulillah uh, the second question that i had was about um i i i know the eight categories of people who are eligible to receive zakat uh, but then there's no mention of them being okay to be a non-Muslim. So if in case we do have a relative who is in need, can zakat be given to them? No, the zakat, it's just for the Muslims. Right. And uh, if you are, uh, want to help your relative, but they are not Muslim from the sadaqat. Okay. As example, as example, if you have, let's say, if you have ten thousand, mm -hmm. and your zakat is two and a half percent, it will be for each one thousand twenty-five, mm -hmm. uh, let's say dollar. So twenty-five dollar, ten thousand two hundred fifty, right. right? If you give them, let's say. $50 in the beginning, zakat, before zakat. This is will be sadaqat. And your amount will go less than 10,000, will be 9,950. So the zakat will go less than before. Am I clear? Because the 50% will not be there for the two and a half percent. So uh, this is uh, something which you make qurba ila Allah jalla wa ala. Understood. Um, and the last question which I had was about uh, how the companions have reported that when Muhammad sallallahu alaihi used to lead the prayers and there used to be a verse where he's praising Allah or where there's a verse they, that they are making dua to Allah in the Quran, which he is reciting. He used to stop and praise Allah. He used to stop and make dua to Allah to have mercy. He used to stop and make dua for forgiveness. So how can we implement on this hadith? This is not in fariba salat. Right. This is in sunnah salat. Yes, you can do this. <coughs> not in the fariba. Right. The five praise. And how can we put into it into practice, Sheikh? 
as example, let's say I'm, 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 I'm in Qiyam uh, al as example. Mm -hmm. Okay. You mean in the Salat or in yes. the Sujood? If it's in the Salat, let's say I become to Ayat Rahma. Mm -hmm. Okay. مثلا أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين أقول بلا when I say yes here بلا this is in the sunnah pray not in the farira pray am I clear yes yes this is you can say it but in sunnah pray but you don't say it to to hear the the people as an imam you hear you make them hear what you said. That's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Am I clear? Still there is... Yeah, I mean, you can give an example. Let's say if I if I recite a verse where there is not ask for mercy or for forgiveness, what should I... I mean, because I'm not very familiar with Arabic, can I make a dua or say ameen or, or may Allah please have mercy? Nas Allah rahma Allah, uh, that's that's what you can say when you when you reading Ayatul Rahma as example. Mm -hmm. And the best for the dua, sujood. This is mm -hmm. the best. Right. ma yakun al abd ila rabbihi wa huwa sajid. More near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are in the sujood. Anyone else, uh, brothers? So I can start now. Bismillah walhamdulillah. Was, uh, there is a uh, kef hunak or lana. It's not uh... okay. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbi wa sallam. Ida qila li al Muslim al Sunni al Multazim. بدين الله عز وجل ما هي غايتك أو رسالتك الجواب غايتي ورسالتي إحياء السنة وإماتة البدع والسنة رأس السنة توحيد الله ورأس البدعة الشرك بالله جل وعلا نعم. So if a Sunni is asked, a person of Sunnah is asked, what is your goal in this life? What is your message? What do you want to achieve? Then the goal of the Sunni, the answer to that is that they want to revive the Sunnah and destroy and wipe out innovation in the religion. And the head of the sunnah, the most important aspect of the sunnah, is a tawheed, singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. And the head, or the most important, the worst part of bid'ah, of innovation in the religion, is shirk, or associating partners in worship with Allah. Ida kana السني في بلد من البلدان هل يسعى إلى عمل جماعة أو تنظيم الجواب لا ليس من المطالب الشرعية عمل تنظيم أو جماعة للوصول إلى هدف شرعي بل هو التعاون 
على البر والتقوى. So if the Sunni finds himself in a land from among the lands, and he wants to establish something from the Sharia, from that which is legislated in the religion, then should he establish an organization or a group in order to achieve this, in order to achieve this, this goal that is from the religion? The answer is no. It is not legislated for him to establish any type of group or any type of organization in order to achieve this. Rather, it is simply the cooperation between each other, cooperation between the Muslims to achieve that which is good. بما لا يخالف يعني قانون البلاد. With the condition, of course, that that cooperation does not oppose any of the laws or any legal restrictions of that country that they're in. السؤال الذي يطرح لماذا لا يعمل السني ب الجمع للاموال للصدقات والزكوات الجواب بان هذا ليس امر شرعي وليس هو من المطالب الشرعيه على المكلف ان يقوم بجمع اوساخ الناس لان الصدقات وما شابه ذلك اسماها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اوساخ الناس فلذلك لا يعمل المسلم السني بهذا المجال وانما لو انا شخصيا قلت لاخي ادم هذا مبلغ ارجو ان تعطيه للفقراء هذا جائز ولكن ان ادعو الناس الى هذا فهنا الامر المنكر ان يكون منظما وان يكون عملا دائما دؤوبا كهدف no. So if the question is asked or put forward that is it permissible or is it something that should be done that the Muslim should try to uh, gather or collect the wealth of the people, money from the people in order to achieve any type of goal. To achieve any type of goal. Then the answer to this is that no, there is, this is not something legislated in the religion to systemize or organize the collection of wealth from among the people in order to achieve some type of goal. This is not something that is legislated in the religion. Now, for example, if somebody wants to uh, ask somebody, for example, they give them an amount of money and they say, please, uh, brother, can you uh, help give this to some poor people that you know? In this type of situation, there is no problem in that. But as far as trying to organize and systemize a... Um, and a yes, and that you make this as a job, for example, that you, as you find that people might become as a job, they are a, a fundraiser is the, the term that's commonly used. So to become a fundraiser, even for Islamic goals, in an organized and systemized way, and you make this as your way or your guidance that this is something that you do on a regular basis and make it part of your religion to do this, then this is something which is not legislated in the religion. <laughs> الشر من المعصية فهل يعني ذلك أن قول صدق الله العظيم أشر فيذكر كبيرة عظيمة فنقول هذه الطريقة في ضرب الأمثال خلاف السنة ولذلك قال الإمام أحمد ولا يضرب لها الأمثال ولكن كتأصيل نعم البدعة أشر من في ميزان الله من المعصية 
ومن الكبيرة وليس في ذلك قياس أي لا نضرب أمثلة في ذلك ولكن كقاعدة نعم هذا هو اعتقاد أهل السنة والبدعة هي تشريع من دون الله نعم So as a principle as a foundation the people of Sunnah recognize that innovation is worse than sins. Bid'ah is worse than sins in the religion. So if someone comes and they want to argue or and, and they want to argue with you and they say, are you saying that a bid'ah such as saying Sadaqallahu al-Azim after reciting the Quran, are you trying to say that this bid'ah is worse than, a, than drinking alcohol, for example, or other than that from the major sins. This is something that they might try and argue with and present doubts about. They'll say, are you trying to uh, compare this bid'ah, which many of the people would consider a small bid'ah, with something which is a terrible sin? Then the answer to this is that it is not from the guidance of the sunnah to make these type of examples as it is established in the Sunnah that we are not to make comparisons or make examples for these clear foundational principles in the Sunnah. And we take it as a principle that bid'ah is worse than innovations because, or from the, reason, from the reasons of that, is that bid'ah or innovation in the religion is legislating something which Allah did not legislate in the religion. كثير من الناس يقول نحن على ما عليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه ولكن على أرض الواقع لما تفتح البحوث والكتابات وتسمع المحاضرات لا تجد لأصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في ذلك يعني نهج متبع في كتاباتهم وفي بيانهم بل تجد أن هذه المسألة معطلة في الغالب You find that many of the people they might claim that they are upon what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was upon and his companions Many people claim this but if you look at their actual lessons if you look at their actual writings if you look at their actual research that they might have compiled in the religion and you look to see what is included or what is the basis and the foundations included in these works in these lessons or in these writings or this research or recordings you find that there is not actual implementation there's not actual mention and let's say uh, application of what the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were actually upon. You do not find them implementing, acting upon, and putting forward what the companions Radiallahu Anhum actually understood in the religion and what they actually acted upon, how they acted upon the religion. <laughs> So if there's any question about any of these points that have proceeded, uh, then inshallah, if you, if you see the raise hand button, then you can click it. If you don't see it, then you can uh, unmute yourself. Okay, brother uh, Mohammed Siakir. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Sheikh, I want to ask something which is not related to the topic. Is it possible? No problem. Go ahead, brother. Uh, if we have uh, neighbors or colleagues who are non-Muslims, can we give them gifts during their festive season? Festive season, Shunayan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
I prefer to not enter in this, but you can give them before or, or after. Yeah, if they want to, to say this is, they mean that they are giving us because of this, this is what they say, but don't give them the same day, the same time. نعم نعم جزاك الله خيرا جيد anyone else brothers okay brother ساجد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله عليك السلام ورحمة الله أهلا ساجد uh, uh, Sheikh, I have a question related to the zakah. So here in India, we, uh, for those who are doing job, you know, service in the companies. So before getting the salary, a part of the money is deducted and uh, it goes in a provident fund, meaning a fund which the government is having. And that money is given to the person after his retirement, like once he becomes more than 60 years of age. So how do we give zakah for this fund, which is with the government and which we don't have uh, with us personally? You don't do like zakat. You, every... you don't do zakat on this one at all. Uh, okay. This one, which they deducted as a, uh, they call it, uh, I mean, uh, pension, as a, pension. Uh, as a social security. They no. do it for. So this money, it's not guarantee for you. Because okay. as example, if the person died with his family, who will take, they will give it to your cousin? No. Finish. It will go to the government, right? If somebody is not married, as example, and he died. Okay. They give it to his brother or sister, the money, the answer no. no. So it's not your money. So until you get part of it okay. clear. No. So the example which I gave to show you, it's not your money. This is the reason why I said if you die, your brother or sister, uh, because they have the right in Sharia, they get the money. Even Kuwait, if you die, they will not give them the money. No. Okay. Is that correct? Jade. Okay, thank you, brothers, inshallah. Hopefully, we'll continue next week, inshallah. Zakam lahiran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.